Broadcasting from the studios of Business Radio X, it's time for Advisory Insights, brought to you by Oberman Law Firm, serving clients nationwide with tailored service and exceptional results. Now, here's your host. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Advisory Insights. Your host, Stuart Oberman here. All right, folks, we're going to gear it up pretty quick on this one. Uh, as the firestorm continues, this episode, FTC proposed ban on non-competes. So in our previous episode, we talked about some companies the FTC sort of slapped a little bit, if you will, um, in relation to their January 4th, 2023 press release from the FTC. But now I want to talk about the Biden administration's proposed ban on non-competes. Look, I, I don't care what your politics is. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care who you vote for. I don't care what you do behind closed doors. It doesn't matter to me. But what I'm looking at is we have to look at the cards that are on the table. Okay. Now the Biden administration, again, I this is not this is not politics. This is purely, purely law. So under the Biden's administration's request, FTC is looking into banning non-compete agreements. So what does that mean? I'm going broad scope here. The FTC's proposal would extend to nearly all work arrangements, including, got to get this, including unpaid or volunteer positions, apprentices, independent contractors, in addition to regular employees. Okay. So now that is extremely broad based. So I don't want to go too far in detail because there's a lot of things that are going to go into this. There's a lot of public notices that have to go out. But what I want to do is point out the, the extreme necessity that our, our employers need to look at regarding this non-competes. So under the rule, under the proposed rule, employers would be required, not optional, required to rescind previously entered non-compete provisions and get this, inform workers in writing via letter, email, text message that their agreement is no longer in effect or even enforceable. Now, if you've got a large company with thousands and thousands of employees under this rule, again, nothing's etched in stone. There's a lot of commentary. There's a lot of things that we're looking at. There's the, you got to look at the executive order and what that is exactly directing the FTC to do. Again, under the rule, employers would require require to rescind previously and are not going to be provisions and inform workers in writing via letter, email, text message, assuming that everyone reads their emails and gets the emails, that their agreement is all enforceable. So a couple carve-outs. The proposed rule could potentially not apply to franchisee or franchise agreements or, and this is critical, this goes to the M&A field, mergers and acquisitions, agreements between buyers and sellers of a business. That's a carve-out. Because if you look at, if you look at that on what those buy-sell agreements are, they're actually valuable consideration for those. So if you're paying someone $50, $50 or $50 million to buy, buy it out, you've got some kind of consideration. That's a whole nother legal issue. But, you know, both of these agreements would be continuing to remain subject to, of course, antitrust laws, um, but that wouldn't necessarily affect the rule. So I think those are two extremely carve-outs, especially when we're looking to buy-sell agreements. Now, that can be businesses, professional professional. Um, you know, mergers and acquisitions. So last year, as a firm, we did about 135 uh, transactions with about $350 million total dollar amount. So I can see why that would be a carve-out exception. But one thing to look at is, first and foremost, this rule doesn't go into effect for many, many months. There's a lot of commentary, and I don't know that we want to waste a whole lot of time on what could be and, and a whole lot of Sunday morning talk show matters. 
But what I want to do is put this in the forefront of you got to look at what you're doing on a daily basis going forward. So first, I will guarantee you that if if this law goes into effect, there's going to be numerous legal challenges. Okay, there's just going to be legal challenges. You know, first, what does this in fact exceed the FTC's um, permission? I mean, uh, authority within rulemaking authority under the Federal Trade Commission Act. First and foremost, that's an issue. Then you've got under that act, you've got, of course, potential delegation clause. What does that look like? And second, so you've got, you know, the, the rulemaking may very well provide, uh, invade the state's province of contract law. Okay. So we got state issues to look at. And then, you know, under the third provision, um, it may trigger major, you know, major question doctrine, um, whether or not the, ban would have to be something that would undertake by Congress and not the FTC as an executive rule. Again, let me repeat that. We have to look at whether or not this action would, the ban would actually come under Congress's authority and not the FTC. Again, a couple issues. So we got to look at what's going on with the band. Months away, a lot of commentary. I'm sure there's going to be tweaks, challenges along the road. Again, I, I don't want to get into politics here, but we got to look at what we have to look at. Then we can look at the three areas that we, we, we say that it may not be enforceable. Um, so again, I want to put this on the forefront of our employers on a state, local, national, and international level as to what's to be expected. Folks, that's all I'm going to comment today. Maybe not tomorrow, but today, uh, on non-compete agreements and the FTC ban. Folks, Stuart Overman here, your host. Thanks again for joining us on Advisory Insights. If you have any questions, give us a call, 770-886-2400, or send me an email, Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, at ObermanLaw.com. Folks, thanks for joining, and have a fantastic day. Thank you for joining us on Advisory Insights. This show is brought to you by Oberman Law Firm, a business-centric law firm representing local, regional, and national clients in a wide range of practice areas, including healthcare, mergers and acquisitions, corporate transactions, and regulatory compliance.